there, it's Anonymous Tea, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we are talking Carlos King. This is an article that came out about a week ago, but there's been so much going on that I didn't have a time to kind of break it down and discuss it. So this is coming from Deadline, and it says the following. It says, Carlos King wants more black reality shows to be produced by black production companies and it says Carlos King who runs Kingdom Reign Entertainment the company behind the hit Love and Marriage Huntsville franchise knows a thing or two about producing African-American focused reality television Kingdom Reign is behind three Love and Marriage series up for Owen set in Huntsville Detroit and DC as well as its latest creation Family Empire Houston which launches today so this was for the premiere of the new show that came out last Friday there are plenty of others on television such as Basketball Wives LA, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, and The Real Housewives of Atlanta. The problem as King sees it is that it's not enough if these shows are produced by black owned production companies. Uh, there's a lot of African American based shows in the world. 99% of them are produced by white owned production companies. White owned production companies are doing a great job of producing the black unscripted shows. But for me, how special would it be for a show to represent the owner of the company so that we're able to really have the ability to not only understand storytelling, but understand the culture in which the storytelling is happening, he tells Deadline. When Denzel Washington was promoting Fences, he gave an interview where he said, it's not color, it's culture, a view that King agrees with. My secret sauce is the fact that my shows represent me and my family and my background. That makes my talent feel comfortable with giving their real life to the show because it's difficult to expose your real life in front of the world to judge. It can be uncomfortable at times, but when you have a company that is owned and operated by a person of color who hires predominantly people of color to produce these shows, it really does feel like a family empire, he adds. Having spent nine seasons working on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, King says that this is the reason that he started Kingdom Reign. You can be somebody who talks about change, but I believe you have to step in front of the conversation and be the change. I wanted to be the change in the room. I wanted to leave my very comfortable position of the showrunner where I knew where my money was coming every single Friday to really invest in myself and invest in my community and invest in my culture. King acknowledges that other black owned companies in the unscripted space, including Jesse Collins Entertainment, which produces events such as the Grammys and Emmys and Manami Productions run by Mona Scott Young behind franchises such as Love and Hip Hop. But he said black professionals in the entertainment business haven't always been given the opportunity to really get our foot wet in this business as owners of companies. We've hired, we are definitely showrunners and producers, but when it comes to ownership, it's not as easy for us. I have to show my industry and my peers that I am going to be the change that I seek, he adds. In addition to hiring people of color, King wants to be able to invest in them for the long term as well so that they can launch their own companies. I want to take them under my wings and help them operate their own production companies. That is a definite bigger goal for me to be able to look at Kingdom Reign Entertainment as this huge conglomerate and then be able to have subsidiaries under me that are totally run by people who work for the company, he says. Kingdom Reign Entertainment was founded in 2012 and King sold his first show, Hollywood Divas, to TV One, where it ran for three seasons. From there, he sold Selling It in the ATL to WeTV and Styling Hollywood to Netflix before scoring the Love & Marriage Huntsville franchise. He also makes Bell Collective for Own, which just aired its fourth season, and Bold & Bougie, which recently lost on WeTV. He, his latest show, Family Empire Houston, which follows a multi-generational Braden family, King says that he was keen to do a show in the Texas city and then discovered this family whose business is real estate. It's about the entrepreneurship of this family, but also just what happens in family dynamics from relationships to love to the drama. It's seeing people who represent the real world, he said. His hope is that Family Empire can be its own franchise and will expand into new cities with new families. With Family Empire Houston, the DNA of the show is a successful family. So when it becomes another franchise, I will definitely look for a family-owned business. It doesn't necessarily have to be based on real estate. It could be a restaurant. It could be a tech company. I want to be able to really diversify it, he says. Next up, King would like to move into the true crime. 
<laughs> true crime and dating and game show spaces. True crime is something that we're developing and talking to a few streamers about. I also want to host and produce a game show. I look at what Steve Harvey has done with Family Feud, which was my favorite. Game shows are something that millions of people just love. Look at how long Wheel of Fortune has been on. I want to be in on American Households five days a week. We know, Carlos. We know. Kingdom Rain was also one of the producers behind The Stroll, a feature documentary for HBO that premiered in Sundance in 2023. The film, directed by Kristen Lavelle and Zachary Drucker, documents trans history in New York from the perspective of Black and Latina trans women who had been sex workers in the meatpacking district during the 1980s and 90s in an area known as The Stroll. It was really special to be at Sundance and sell a documentary that really spoke to the trans community. My goal is to continue to tell different stories that some people may shy away from. We are definitely navigating to have more of those, he says. King may find himself in the M&A space as larger production groups look at opportunities. He says that he has already been approached for an investment. I'm always open to a meeting and a conversation. My focus is to continue building the company and making sure we are seen as a multifaceted, diverse storytelling company, he adds. <laughs> Uh, so this kind of makes sense now Carlos King's resentment against uh, Candy Burris and against Mel Cherie Rogers is that he wanted to be the one that is under their control right uh, so nonetheless uh, he wanted them to basically work for him still even if they had their own production companies or had their own opportunities he didn't want Candy and Mel to branch out from up under him and have their own production companies and produce their own content and make their own money that is not under the Kingdom Reign conglomerate. So that makes sense why allegedly uh, Candy was sabotaged, you know, his last season and why Mel appears to be sabotaged this season. Well, she's been sabotaged other seasons, but this season in particular it's a lot more blatant with like the lack of episodes and and the lack of scenes um it's like worse than before but it all makes sense now carlos wants you to suck up to him and feel like you need him in order for you to succeed he feels a certain way if you go outside the box and you're able to find opportunities for yourself and you're able to succeed without him so therefore he takes it out on you on the show and tries to give you a bad edit or have everybody come for you in a storyline or always have you in the middle of drama instead of showcasing your businesses and your success that you were having outside of the show by using the show as a platform right so that makes sense it, it's funny that Carlos also said in this article that I found interesting that he utilizes these reality shows to tell a story of what he went through in his family. So is he basically saying that his obsession with uh, love triangles and whether or not somebody was a side chick it is uh, too close to home? It is what he's experienced? Is that why we're seeing the same storylines over and over and over again? And, and, and perpetuating tr cheating, making the aggressors and, and all these things the victims, painting this image that the men are all saints no matter how they talk to their women. And if there's misogyny and disrespect and cheating, it's okay because you're still going to make him look good. But it is the black woman's fault for everything because she did something wrong to deserve to be cheated on, to deserve to be ABUSED and all these things. Are you saying that this is all from your family experience, Carlos King? But because it's the same wash, rinse, and repeat on each of your shows. And the moment anybody has a backbone, the moment anybody becomes successful, independent of you, is when the tide starts to change and people start to come at that person in particular who isn't doing anything. Or the nice people get the villain at it all of a sudden. Uh, to make it seem like they're the mastermind of all of this chaos and all of this controversy. And I find it hilarious that uh, Carlos King wants to go in true crime. That to me was just the icing on the cake as, as far as I'm concerned. I cannot imagine uh, taking Carlos King seriously with a true crime drama or television show or whatever. That is going to be very wild. Is it going to be like some variation of the For My Man series? Like what are we talking about as far as true crime? 
how deep are we going to go? Are you going to be the one that needs to be in front of the camera as well to narrate this? Because you said you want people to see you on their screens five days a week, which makes sense as to why you keep inserting old footage on each episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville that features yourself, whether it is a reunion clip or the continuous clip of Mel's podcast event that was in January wise. But also uh, Carlos King wanting to get into game shows. Remember that uh, Andy Cohen also was on a game show called Love Connection, you guys. And he hosts uh, the New Year's Eve special with uh, Anderson Cooper on um, CNN. So it, it, de it definitely feels as though Carlos King is still watching everything that Andy Cohen is doing at Bravo from afar and trying to find ways to emulate it. He already had the failed talk show uh, that didn't last anything more than a season that was supposed to be, I guess, the black version of Watch What Happens Live. And again, making all these spinoff franchises just like Real Housewives has several spinoff, um, you know, franchises as well. And also now trying to venture out into some other opportunities. He has a podcast um, just like Andy Cohen has a podcast and has his own channel at Sirius X. XM. And then Carlos, you know, started this podcast tour, but due to the budget and everything else with NBC Universal, uh, they've turned it into an actual tour with several dates to meet your favorite housewives and have a live version of, you know, the Watch What Happens live experience and all of the things. Uh, so it's very interesting to see, you know, this article. And this article only exists is because it's to promote the new show Family Empire Houston. And it's funny that now all of a sudden he wants to feature black family-owned business and show uh, the, the inner workings of it all and try to make it seem like like uh, this is going to be his new direction and his new focus as if the love and marriage franchise isn't absolutely kaput and isn't absolutely a disaster like I just I'm just trying to understand like the rationale right the rationale of all of this but basically wants to choose other families in other cities whether they're owners of a restaurant owners of a tech company owners of whatever and showcase you know the different nuances of things but um nonetheless uh we'll see what happens we will see whether or not this family empire houston show is a success or not and i am curious to find out which streaming companies is going to green light a carlos king true crime show that will be very 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 interesting to see and and of course he's going to promote his consultation which isn't it like five thousand dollars or something uh for you to pitch him an idea that he's just going to take it and, and re i mean i mean sorry uh because I, I thought the selling an atl show was sheree Whit Whit whitfield's ideal I, I thought that was sheree's uh baby that she wanted right and 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 here comes Comes Carlos King right and I thought Mel's original purpose of love and marriage Huntsville was she wanted to focus in on real estate and property preservation and all of these things and and here comes a real estate show so nonetheless uh, we will see what comes of this it seems like Carlos King is trying to distance himself from the love and marriage franchise because he knows it's on his last legs and is now trying to position himself to make it seem like now he's all about positive black representation and wants to get into true crime wants to get into game shows wants to be into all of these other things as if we we're supposed to forget the disasters that love and marriage uh, franchise has become and it's interesting because there's people who are even saying that even what has gone on with Mona Scott shows is not even at the level of the darkness and the drama and the chaos that is taking place on these love and marriage shows you guys but nonetheless uh like i said we'll see what comes of this we will see what the future holds for the existing shows that carlos king produces but it makes so much sense now why he is the way that he is he wants you to be up under him at all times and feel like you need him and you need him to be successful and he needs to be responsible which is why he keeps certain cast members close to the best and gives them good edits because they're willing to say and do anything for that check 
And uh, as long as they do not outshine Carlos King or become more successful than Carlos King or become on the same level as Carlos King, he will continue to give them a good edit on the show, even if it's a completely fake storyline. But the moment that you branch out and want to do something for yourself and become something of yourself, then it is a problem because it shows that you do not need him anymore. And now it makes sense more than ever that he's using his own family experiences to put on display for the people in love and marriage Huntsville, but it's showing nothing but dysfunction and misogyny and glorifying cheating and glorifying uh, all of this trifling behavior, you guys. And it gets to a point where it gets so dark and it gets so messy that people, you know, you can't come back from certain things that's said and done on his shows. So nonetheless, uh, there is that. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.